I thought I knew what I was doing in my life. Like, how you define yourself is very different than how other people define you. If somebody said, hey, what's your name? You're like, Bruce. Bruce, what do you think of you? Well, I think I'm smart, I'm intelligent, I'm a leader. And you go, hey, Bruce's friend, what do you think of Bruce? Bruce is a fucking numbskull. <laughs> Different things how people perceive you. I thought I knew what I was talking about. This is what I thought. I said, Man, I've been doing comedy a long time. I know who I am. I know exactly what I'm doing. And I was walking down the street in Milwaukee. And his brother goes, Hey, oh shit, man, you the comedian, right? I was like, Yeah, yeah, man. All right, that's me. That's me. He goes, Yeah, you the real philosophical nigga with the fucked up eyes. That's you, right? <laughs> and that's very far from how I describe myself. <laughs> But, God damn it, he's right. God damn it, he's right. How'd you get your start in comedy? Went up on a dare. I was playing a little basketball in Seattle, and then I was a quiet teammate. So they dared me to do it, but I was scared of them. And then I was dating a girl at the same time, and she said, what if you don't make it to the NBA? You know, I'm way better at this my first time than the first time I ever tried to do any sport. So that was it. I just knew it. this is it, man. Well, and some people are kind of born into sport. Do you think you were born into comedy? Absolutely, one hundred percent, one hundred percent, one hundred percent of. I mean, growing up on my family on my mom's side, being just nonstop preachers, and and I mean my dad and he and the pimp and his grandfather. Just so he's like, I mean, who but better bullshitters than preachers and pimps? And for me, be a comic to be combining both of those things is yeah, there's nothing more I could have done than this. Let me tell you what's a very effective teaching tool for relationships. Two TVs in the house. Try that shit for a little while. <laughs> Two TVs in the house. You ever notice how vastly different you fucking TV watching is? <laughs> My wife likes to watch something that makes her cry on purpose. <laughs> I haven't had a good cry since Wednesday, so. Why don't we watch this cancer baby documentary? <laughs> oh God, this is so sad. Well, change the town. I watch a cartoon. No, don't touch it. I need to see it. <laughs> oh man, uh, it took a long time in terms of uh, me feeling like I was gonna be ready for it because I, again, I'm. I wanted that Marvin Gaye, like Marvin Gaye when he went and did What's Going On. Mm -hmm. He got in so much trouble from the record label because he was over by months and months. He said, I just know it's not right. So he went and locked himself in the Poconos and they wanted him to do the same old Tammy Terrell pop music stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, if I'm gonna do an album, you know, I want it to be something special. And so I went through the eye surgeries that I did and I found that piece of material, which took about 20 minutes of material. And I thought, okay, now this is what I'm gonna wrap the album around. So I called it Blind Ambition, and we turned it into a special, and then Standard Records made it my first album, and then, you know, those guys being as good as they are, having represented Lewis Black and everybody who was good, uh, for it to do as well as it did in terms of critical success was like, it was, I get emotional thinking about it, man. It was such a, almost a biblical leap of faith to get it done. Oh, listen, oh, I gotta tell you what happened. So one time, uh, I was about to have surgery, on this, the, the only good eye that I have. And a New York surgeon said, we can try the procedure and it might work, but it probably won't. I was like, might work, but probably won't? How many years of medical school is that? <laughs> Everything might work, but probably won't. Me trying to fix it myself might work, but probably won't. <laughs> Who wouldn't do anything with those kind of options? You could try to make a sudden move to your pocket in front of police and it might work, but it probably won't. <laughs> you, can, you can try to let Jesus take the wheel feel like the song so much, that might work, but it probably won't. You, you try to eat a bucket of Popeyes and sit through a coffee date and it might work, but it probably won't. You try to get Jews to forgive and forget, might work, but it probably won't. You try to get a big black woman to celebrate quietly on the Price is Right. Guess what's gonna happen? What's next for you? What do you got coming up next? What I've been working on is, um, I know at some point I'll have to do another hour, but I haven't really been chasing that new hour yet. 
Uh, I've been really working on uh, a television show, which I have in development called Lennox 2020, that I wrote uh, on my phone. You know, <laughs> like holding the phone to my eye like this is how I write. No glad like this, and I wrote a whole script like this because I got, I, you know, I knew that. I have to change something because I got so much success from uh, Blind Ambition. I was going to road constantly, 250, 260 days a year, and I thought, well, this is going to kill me, and I have to get to another level. So I wrote this, uh, this show based upon my life and my experiences in my day to day. It's something that I've always dreamt of doing, but I'm finally in a place where, you know, it's, it's me, it's what I, it's, it's who I am. <laughs> Can I tell you a story? This is exactly what happened. This is a true story. I came, uh, so after one show, I'm in, uh, I go to my hotel, and then uh, I want to, uh, I order a little late night panini sandwich. And uh, the dude knocks on the door. I don't have my glasses on, but I got $20 in my pocket. As I open the door, 20 bucks squirts out of my hand, and then, and then he goes, hey, that's $13.50. I go, okay, listen, dude, I apologize, but my eyes are bad. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's a $20 bill on the floor in here somewhere. You want to just come in here and just bend over and grab that 20 for me? And he just started running. <laughs> I mean, he took off like he had fallen for that before. Yeah, you know I mean, like. So in his mind, you know what he thought? He thought that I was some sort of unauthorized lovemaker. And that was my go-to move. Like, that's how I get them, is like checking hotels and I pretend to be blind and I call a random sandwich delivery, man, and just be like, oh shit, is somebody in this room? Because I can't see you very well. I don't see nothing. I think I smell chicken pie. Oh, I got you, plenty in your man. I got you. You thought I couldn't see, but I saw you the whole time. This is all part of my gimmick. <laughs> <laughs>